Mayor Michael Hancock here. We're at Metropolitan State University with the president of Metropolitan State University, Dr. Janine Davis, that I am so honored to be with you today. What are we doing here today? We are going to talk about what it's like to be mayor of Denver. Oh, wow. And what you care about. Oh, wow. And you, all kinds gonna, of things are, to make our students motivated for public service. Are you going to answer all those questions? What no. it's like to be mayor? <laughs> no. no, I can't imagine what it's like to be mayor. I, I want to know what it's like to be president of Metropolitan State University. It's an awesome job. Just a, it's a super awesome job. I am so excited yeah. to be with you today. Yeah, me too. Are we going to have some fun? Yeah, let's have it. Let's go have some fun. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here today, Mayor Hancock. Thank you. Thank you. And I think the cities and states that got through the pandemic the best were those where leaders said, I'm not a public health expert. Bring the data to me. We're part of a team. I'll make the call, the tough calls, but you tell me what the calls we have to make. And, and we're not going to argue over politics. We're not going to argue over who's right, who's wrong, who's red, who's blue, who's Republican, who's Democrat. We're here to save lives. We're going to let the data dictate to us because at the end of the day, at some point, that data is going to give you coverage. And ultimately, that's exactly what we did. I had public health experts. That's why you hire them. That's why you put them in place. You hope you never need them, but we did. And they would come to me and they say, here's the reality. Here's where we sit. And if you can't, if we don't shut the city down, we're going to lose people. And that was the hardest call I ever had to make ever as a public official. I knew I was putting people out of work. I knew I was going to destroy livelihoods. I knew I was going to hurt businesses. But at the end of the day, we find it much easier to build an economy than to build lives that are gone. And that's what we wanted to do. There is no amount of fentanyl that anyone should be possessing outside of a prescription from their doctor. No amount. And so we had this argument going on, what, you know, rather, you know, what we should be doing, what should be the right prop. There isn't any, because you're playing Russian roulette with it. This is a deadly drug and one in which we got to do everything we can to sound the alarm, raise the flag. Parents, you got to tell your kids you can't get a buzz. You're playing Russian roulette because you don't. And by the way, a lot of these, these street level dealers don't know that they're dealing fentanyl. They're dealing Oxycontin or whatever. And they don't know it's laced and it's taking people out. We don't want to go back to war on drugs. The problem with the war on drugs was that it was just a law enforcement response and nothing else. But we cannot sit back and allow for possession of fentanyl, particularly enough to kill 2,000 people to be dealt on our streets. I'd rather arrest someone who is street level dealing and give them alternatives to get out of this game than allow them to continue to deal. Help us get to who's dealing the big stuff so that we can get it controlled in our communities. Because next time it may very well be you or your child or someone you love who gets their hands on this stuff. EPA just recommended a severe rating for Denver's air quality, and he asked what uh, policies that he would, I would recommend to ease that. First of all, the policy number one is choose other modes of transportation. We cannot sustain a 73% single occupied vehicle culture in Denver, not at the growth rate that we have. We've got to get people to get out of cars and use other modes of transportation. Gridlock will choke us environmentally, but also it will, it will choke productivity. So we've got to, we've got to change. But we've got to have a system that works, that's affordable, convenient, and accessible for people to use transit-wide. That's critical. Continue to build transit, continue to build other modes of transportation, and continue to drive density around transit corridors. I think that's incredibly important. We've already made some changes. Energize Denver is a program where we are now mandate certain levels of clean energy for uh, our buildings to drop. So that's the second tier of carbon footprint, right? And, and bad air quality. Our new uh, Office of Climate Action and Sustainability and Resiliency um, is built on staying consistent on implementing those strategies for clean energy and decreasing our carbon footprint. 